This is G-Chamber, one of eight at Duke University Medical Center's hyperbaric research facility, the F.G. Hall Environmental Lab. Inside this seven and a half foot diameter steel ball, a world's record was set in early 1981. Three volunteer divers were compressed to a simulated ocean depth of 686 meters, breathing a gas mixture of helium, oxygen, and nitrogen called Trimix. Dr. Peter Bennett, the lab's director and project leader of the Atlantis Dive series, has assembled at Duke a team of experts in the field of hyperbaric medicine. In Atlantis III, these researchers, funded by the National Institute of Health, the U.S. Navy, Shell Oil International, and Oceaneering International, carried out eight separate scientific studies. The diver volunteers were highly skilled professionals. Lynn Whitlock is an Atlantis I veteran and a commercial diver. Lead diver for Atlantis III was Steve Porter, also a veteran Atlantis test subject and a commercial diver, while Eric Kramer, an ex-U.S. Navy demolitions diver, was a first-time Atlantis volunteer. During Atlantis III, the Duke divers, researchers, and a dedicated technical support team gathered valuable information as to how man may best be compressed to great depths while overcoming the chief barrier of deep diving, the high-pressure nervous syndrome or HPNS. The morning of January 23rd, 1981, some 500,000 cubic feet of specially prepared breathing gas stands ready outside Duke's hyperbaric laboratory. The tanks contain the ingredients of Trimix 10. At 8.15, Divers Porter, Whitlock, and Kramer bid nice farewell day. to the support crew and seal themselves inside G-Chamber. See you in the spring. Minutes later, the pressure is increased. Their environment is becoming radically different from that only a few inches away outside the chamber. For all practical purposes, these men may as well be in a saturation diving bell on their way to be locked out for a day's work at 2,000 feet below the sea. Determining that the breathing gas inside is now of a stable and uniform content, the chamber operator asks the divers to remove their temporary breathing masks. Speech distortion caused by the helium is corrected okay, to facilitate voice communication. Okay, could you give us a little conversation so that we can adjust your speech? Speaker. Okay, well, here we are. Uh, we have for breakfast, I guess. All right, looking good, sounding good. Three, Great. zero, two. All that scramble egg and ham. Okay, Lynn, you ready to give it a try, buddy? viewing ports will provide adequate site monitoring for the chamber crew and researchers while allowing minimal visual contact for the divers. Within an hour, they have finished breakfast and are approaching the 305 meter mark. Here they will be held for two hours while they take the first of some 47 performance tests scheduled for the duration of the dive. The test battery consists of measurements of the EEG, intellectual and psychomotor capacities, postural tremor, physical sensation and mood questionnaires, sleep quality and presence of dreams. A video camera will record selected portions of these tests and other experiments. The divers will also keep daily logbooks. Three very important parts of the performance package are the psychomotor tests. These tests, developed over 15 years of research, measure the effects of HPNS on manual dexterity of the subject. 
the range of motor control from fine to gross is measured in one minute exercises. Ball bearings must be picked up with forceps and placed into a tube, pegs and washers arranged on a board, while a transducer on the finger of the third subject measures postural tremor. Using the tools more closely related to the commercial diver's trade, nuts and bolts are removed from steel plates, and then replaced and tightened. Four hundred and sixty meters. At 7.30 p.m. on the second day of the dive, a depth of 460 meters is reached. 460 meters. You've taken twice as long in terms of compression rate as you did for Atlantis II or Atlantis I. Uh, Steve, how was the compression to you and how do you feel right now? Feel good now. Uh, first part of compression was pretty rough. Uh, Steve complains of uncomfortable heat during the initial compression phase, but feels no real signs of HPNS and little, if any, narcosis. Len, could I ask you the same questions as to how you feel through the whole compression over the two days and how you feel now? Well, yesterday after compression, I was about 85% of uh, feeling normal. Today, right now, I'm down about 95% on the scale of feeling normal. Okay. Eric, how about yourself? I feel really good. Uh, no really strong effect in the way. The performance tests that follow confirm the absence of HPNS as reported by the divers. Several related experiments are focused on electrical activity of the brain while the divers are engaged in different mental activities. Dr. Gail Marsh will record EEG from frontal, top, and posterior parts of the head at frequent intervals in the dive to check for signs of slowing in the EEG. This will provide advance warning of severe HPNS in the divers. But Marsh also wants to measure to what extent the diver's attention wanders and how rapidly they can think a problem through, since these functions often slow at deeper depths. The major focus of our first experiment is to look at divers while they are comparing a digit presented to them. Uh, and they must take this digit and compare it to a list which they're holding in mind make a decision whether it's one of those in their list or not, and then press a key as rapidly as possible. From this we extract not only reaction times, but also evoke potentials. These evoke potentials are obtained from the EEG. Um, and the evoke potentials have certain characteristics which we can trace, which show whether the divers have looked through their memories, made a decision yes or no, and then at approximately uh, 400 to 800 milliseconds after the stimulus, whether they have uh, successfully accomplished their decision making. Um, in another experiment, we use similar sorts of stimuli, again digits, presented in very rapid succession, about once a second, to trace the diver's ability to uh, maintain a focus of concentration. In this experiment, the divers must compare the present 